So what we do is, is if you decide to work with us, which I hope you all will, we want to make sure first that we have the right plan in place and then that you maintain the plan as you go along. So we have a maintenance program. We call it our client and family care plan where we get together with you each year or periodically, whatever time frame you, you choose. But regularly we get together, make sure there have been no changes. If there's changes in the law, I tell you about that. If you have family changes, I want you obviously to tell me about that to see if we need to adjust the plan. Very important. That's so important actually that um, AARP, they did a study on this and they asked folks in the survey, they said, how long is it between your estate plan updates? In other words, I go to see a lawyer, have a will drawn up. What do you think the average time it is, the folks said before they went back to see that lawyer to update the plan? How long? Five, 10 years? They said 19 and a half years was the average. So, you know, if that's 20 years, you know there are people that were 25, 30 years. And AARP said, unfortunately, that 90% 90, 90 of estate plans failed because of this, because of these beneficiary designations, you know, people named executor, people they didn't want, someone had died, etc., etc., etc. A lady came in to see me the other day and I was reading her will and I said, oh, well, I see John is your executor. And there was just like a pregnant pause in the room and she said, no, he's not. And I said, yeah, you know, it says right here, John, you know, I appoint John as my executor. She said, I can't stand John. <laughs> she said, I thought I'd change that years ago. So just an example of, um, you know, these, these things get forgotten, which is so Im why it's so important to, uh, you know, to keep everything up to date as we go along. <coughs> okay, so a couple of good examples there of what not to do. Excuse me while I get a little more water here. So because of everything that I've been talking about today, this is really a change in mind shift. And for, you know, for us attorneys too that do this work, it's a different way of thinking. Because if you'd have come to see me you know, 20 years ago, really before I got that call from Norman, my, these, the questions were at the top of the screen here, this is what we would have been focusing on. What do you want to happen to your assets when you die? Who do you want them to go to? When? How? How can we minimize estate inheritance taxes? How can we avoid capital gains? All those questions. And obviously those are still very important questions, but they're really focused on after you die. Now, the question that, that we need to ask first is what happens if you don't die? Of course, we're, we're all going to pass eventually, but what happens if more likely we become ill first and we have this long-term care stay? We have to plan for this first because those general statistics that I shared with you at the beginning, Genworth says if we're 65 or older, Okay, if we're 65 or better, seven out of 10 of us are going to require some long-term care stay, some stay in some form or another outside of the home before we pass away. So we have to ask this question first because if you think about it, if we don't protect against this, doesn't really matter what we say up here, right? Because if all the money's gone in the nursing home, this really doesn't matter if there's nothing left because we got sick. So how do we do that? 